Hello YouTube, it's Jeff. Uh, just want to do a kind of a quick recap on this uh, rocket stove. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much finished. Uh, I did a couple little tweaks to it last week uh, after burning it. I burned it probably all oh, 12, 15 times. Um, really super happy with it. Other than a couple small snafus, it was uh, totally my fault. Uh, the thing performs wonderfully. Um, I just really 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 happy with it and um, uh, as you can see here I did a little small uh, air vent uh, on the top of the lid just drilled some holes welded a little stainless steel uh, stub in there put a couple little thumb twists on her and she's ready to go um, I was, uh, also in the front uh, I did a little you know sliding door I kind of had all this up before but I had a magnet on it didn't uh, after you heated the magnet up a few times it didn't work too good so I just put a spring and a couple washers in where you can slide it out of the way um, did a uh, little stainless steel grate um, to feed my pellets and wood and it's kind of why it's stepped a little bit like that uh, the one I'm going to do for the house I'm going to do completely different than what I've done this it like I said this is my first build um, a lot of this was just kind of experimentation and uh, a lot of you know just trial and error uh, like you do with anything else but as it as it sets now I'm like I said beyond happy with it uh, with this design I know it's a little unconventional but with this design I get a tremendous amount of heat not only off the top of this stove but also down here at the bottom because the fire is actually here and then shooting over and then up so uh, I'm getting a tremendous amount of heat generated off of this and and uh, this is this is out in the garage um, obviously cement floor um, so really no no fire danger as far as uh, heat generation goes but um, this little stove, honestly, with probably a little handful of wood, uh, three or four little pieces, uh, about a foot long, uh, I can throw in, throw in this thing, light it up, and I think the other morning it was 23 degrees uh, here. Uh, I come out, threw, I think, four, four of those one-by-ones in, uh, they're just junk wood laying around pine um, threw it in there lit it and within 45 minutes I could work out here comfortably in a t-shirt and this garage is 24 foot by 24 foot uh, it does have drywall on the on three of the walls um, but no insulation the the it goes straight up as you can see uh, it's wide open probably 16 foot plus tall up to the peak uh, up through the second floor no insulation um, I can fire it up like I said at 23 degrees within 45 minutes I could work out here in a t-shirt uh, probably raised it I'm guessing a good 35 degrees maybe 40 degrees um, and this garage is not um, airtight by any means neither. I mean, there's two big swinging doors on the front, uh, big gaps around it. There's cracks in between the wood on the on the doors, and so. Uh, but it it does a great job. Um, I'm uh, for that little bitty stove and just a small amount of actual fire, probably no bigger than the size of your fist, uh, going. Uh, it, it generates a lot of heat um, do not burn coal in these things uh, I found that out I about had a total meltdown on this um, I had the, at the top of this actually has like divots I don't know if you can see it or not where it actually buckled and the front of here the front of this feed tube uh, where it goes on the body of the stove I thought was actually just gonna it was so white hot red, red it turned red first and then white uh, I thought it was just going to melt and just fall off the front but um, I, you know that's what I was doing I was pushing it to its limits to see what it would actually 
you know withstand and hold up to um and it did it uh there for a little while i thought i was going to have a meltdown but um uh, it's it stood up well uh, uh just beyond happy um the next design i do for the house i'm going to do a little differently uh i'm actually going to move this chamber now i know i know there's a lot of designs on there like kevin's goes down like at a 45 degree angle uh trying too hard just come straight out and i i, I kind of liked the idea of both of them but i i, I wanted a, something that would self-feed down but I also wanted something sticking out of the front, like trying two hards, where I could generate a lot of heat off of the front of this. So this was what I came up with. And like I said, it, it works really, really well. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this closer to the stove body. I'm gonna leave maybe about a half inch to an inch gap between here and the actual stove body. Then I'm gonna build another one of these and leave about an inch between them and build another one out to the front and that's going to come down and then cut in on a 45 degree angle and I'm going to make a, a little uh, feed chute that will go in here and basically dump the pellets where I can fill this totally up with wood and then have my pellets come in and dump in on that little stainless steel uh, great that's up inside here i might might redo it um i'll probably redo this uh a little bit differently uh with that with the other setup but this seems to work pretty good for, for like i said for what it is and what i want for out here in the garage so uh for right now what i do um i'll just put dump that wood uh put four, three, four pieces of wood down in here and then just get a couple of those uh, pellets and just dump around them. And it burns nice, it, you know, it'll, it'll self feed down, the pellets burn real nice and hot. Um, but I found out, and that's the reason I put this on here, this thing likes to draw differently uh, as far as the airflow goes, depending on what it's burning. Uh, if I'm burning uh, when I first started up, when I'm burning mostly pellets that burn extremely hot, what I do, I crank the top of this air feed totally down, make it airtight, and leave this one completely open when I first start it. And I'll leave it run like that for probably, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. And then I found out when it, when it once it burns most of the pellets off and the wood is starting to kind of take over and self-feed down. I can close this front damper down and leave about a half inch gap and then open this up a little bit oh, where there's about a half inch gap up at top. And so you're drawing air down this way and then it's getting a little flow of air pushing it this way and so you, you, you get a really nice draft going that way. It burns nice. Uh, it's, not, it's not too hot, but it's, it's not enough where it's roaring neither. Um, you can really regulate it. I was gonna put a, uh, a traditional damper into the exhaust pipe, uh, the little twist handle thing uh, with the flapper in the center. I uh, was going to put one of them in there, but I don't really think it's needed. Uh, I can regulate this thing. Matter of fact, I can put the, the, the fire, I can have this thing raging, uh, have all this red hot, and I can twist that down and close that up, and I, I can essentially just starve it for it and, and put the fire out immediately. Uh, it'll just, it'll smoke for a few minutes, but uh, I can effectively just, shut it completely down by just doing that so uh i think uh i i, I like it it's a good design i this this particular design i'm getting a ton of heat off of this area of the stove and the top so uh very very happy with it and just to show you this is just thin um exhaust pipe for like or um vent pipe for uh for like hot water heaters and stuff like that it's four inch but i basically had this thing 
ready to melt. Um, I mean, it was just on the verge of just melting and falling off the front. And here, I intentionally left this sticker on. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit discolored, but totally intact on the exhaust. So, so hot as about ready to melt down. Top of it, dimpled. Uh, top of the stove is actually has dimples from the heat. And a little paper sticker on the exhaust, totally intact. So no discoloration whatsoever on the pipe all the way, all the way up and out there. It's kind of an unconven uh, unconventional uh, wind cap on the top of there, but hey, it works. <laughs> uh, it was a real windy day and raining when I first tested this, and uh, I just had that square piece of uh, metal that I had already bent up that I was going to use uh, kind of as a test hopper for the front for the feet of this thing and uh, wind was blowing and I just grabbed it threw it on there and I just it worked so good I've just left it up there I think I'll leave it as is so um, but I really want to thank uh, Kevin Bacon and trying too hard for uh, all their guidance and uh, input and um, I really appreciate it Kevin super great guy uh, even took the time out to uh, do a video response on, on uh, a lot of the questions that I had about these before I even started building it. So uh, thanks, Kevin. Great big thank you. Um, and trying too hard, uh, a lot of ideas. I was bouncing off of him back and forth, uh, design ideas and everything. Great guy. Uh, again, uh, really knowledgeable on these and, and uh, got a gleaned a great amount of information from these two and just wanted to say a great big thank you to them and uh, uh, really grateful this would not have got uh, off the ground well if uh, and off and running as good as it did uh, if it wasn't for those two so um, if you're thinking about building one of these go for it as Kevin said in a lot of his videos uh, just go for it, do it, um, weld it together, see what happens, play around with it, experiment with it safely. <laughs> uh, don't go doing no really boneheaded things with these, but uh, they, they can get dangerous. They get extremely hot, but um, a lot of fun. Uh, I learned a lot uh, by building this, and like I said, I'm going to build some more. Uh, I'm going to do one for the house and, um, and then build another one just for fun. And uh, I know. Previously, I mentioned something about uh, selling them or whatever, but uh, I, I'll probably just end up giving it away. Uh, I enjoy building these things so much. Um, Money-wise, I had like 40 bucks, maybe $45 in this build, but a lot of this I had already laying around. Uh, I had to buy the propane tanks, uh, the, the pipe. Um, I bought it at a uh, you know, big box store, so... I think it was like five bucks a section. Uh, the elbows, uh, some of the fittings, um, but I, th I think right around forty, forty-five dollars. Now, even if I did have to go buy all of all of the steel and everything new, or at the scrapyard or what have you, uh, you still should be able to do one of these really nice for. Uh, depending on your area, I'm I'm thinking a hundred dollars you know less than 100 to maximum of 150 to 200 if you do uh do a lot of stainless steel or uh, other things um, i did use header wrap for insulation um, i buy that for my motorcycles um, i get it out of tennessee it's like uh four i think 40 bucks with free shipping for a 50 foot roll so you can do quite a few stoves uh, for that but it Again, has really worked out good. No deterioration whatsoever. Even when I threw the coal in uh, uh, to, and burned it, um, absolutely uh, held intact. So uh, I'll probably stick with that. Uh, and as as Kevin said in a pr couple previous videos, uh, you know, do a double wrap on them. That's what I did. Uh, I did two layers of it, and it seems to work great. So no issues whatsoever. Uh, draws good. It's easy to light and um, overall just tickled so uh, just wanted to thank everybody kind of give a recap on this one and 
when I start my next build, uh, I'll do the same thing. I'll just kind of go from a start to finish and show you how some of my other ideas as far as the new uh, new pellet feed that I'm thinking about doing and uh, some great different great systems and stuff like that. So uh, enjoyed this. I uh, hope you did. And uh, be safe with them and have fun. Thanks.